It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sports book app. Although, for the second week in a row, we are recording on Sunday evening. We do that from time to time if that's what's best for the guest. And for the second week in a row, that is what's best for the guys today. Alex Andalone, he's been on the show a couple times from my hometown, Why Missing, Pennsylvania, absolute stud, going into free agency. Maybe, hopefully, your team will be able to sign him, coming off a terrific year in a lot of different ways. We'll get to Alex momentarily. New week means new opportunities. New spread the word winner via social media, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod. You guys know the deal, most of you. New sponsor confirmation email winner. We got some new sponsors this week. How about Keeps? Man, thank goodness for Keeps. Now, Alex has that awesome long blonde hair. I don't. I start, Dude, I didn't even realize. It's hard to lose my hair when I was getting married. 26. Looking at the videos now, I'm like, ah, Keeps. I'll tell you about them later. Shout out for people who subscribe to the new YouTube channel. I'll give you a cameo style shout out at the end of the week. Love, love, love doing that. Just like I love talking to my boy, Alex Anzalone from Why Missing. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right. So before we even get into the free agency stuff, Alex, I was texting you to come on the show and it took you a day or two to get back to me. And you said, sorry, man, uh, I got a newborn here. I had no idea. What, what is the deal? Man, we um, uh, we got pregnant, I guess, around this time la- last year, around, uh, you know, when lo- after lockdown happened. And uh, it was planned, believe it or not. We were like, man, this coronavirus is going to be, by January, it'll be over. So uh, obviously that didn't really work out too well. But, um, you know, it's, it's uh it's been a blessing. It's been fun. We we had him, uh, Cooper, January 11th. So that was the Monday for the Bucks game in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we, we went into that Bears game knowing that we were going to be induced that night. And uh, after Monday, he, we, he came. He came and uh, it's been a blessing. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. This is awesome. I didn't know any of this. So wait a minute. So <laughs> you knew that. You know, your wife was due. So, was there any chance, like, that she went into labor, like, during the Bears game? Yeah, there, there was a chance. So, like, um, you know, leading up to that week, obviously, his due date was the 11th. So, uh, you know, my coaches would ask, you know, what, what, what are you going to do if, he, if she goes into labor during the game? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but um, after talking to our doctor and everything like that, we thought it was best to – um induce her that night um and you know timing wise it just worked out well he was he was in there cooking up 40 weeks total and uh you know came out healthy and uh wifey was healthy too so that was good so wait a minute so right after you guys beat the bears and by the way you guys were killing him that game was so boring i watched the second (laughs) half on nickelodeon just to check it out just to check out like the nickelodeon thing you went right from the game to the hospital and your wife was induced literally like you know after the game i cuz obviously like my my wife Lindsay she's a champ like she played c- college soccer at the university of florida and you know she's a beast she's more athletic than i am and um you know like she used to, she was telling me before the game like i would bring it up that morning so like oh like i brought an air uh, air mattress to the hospital and uh for myself and she's like, don't even, don't, you're not allowed to ask me any questions about birth tonight, going to the hospital. You have to focus on the game. So, like, I was able to compartmentalize it like crazy. And, you know, she kept me focused on the game. And, um, yeah, like, after the game, I got in the shower. All my buddies knew it was happening. So, got in the shower. You know how it is after the game. You're still, you shower and you're still sweating after the shower. And then I just ran home and drove home from the stadium and, you know, shower again to get extra clean and, um, ate some food and we, we were off to the hospital. Dude, that is awesome. Congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you. That makes me feel real old though. Real <laughs> old. Like, uh, legitimately, I mean, I don't, I didn't know you when you were a baby, but I knew you when you were really little, dude. Like, right. like five or six, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, four, yeah, or yeah. five, or six. I've known you since you were really little, so that makes me feel really old that <laughs> you have a child. And I love the fact um, that your wife's maiden name is Cooper, and you named your son Cooper. My sister did that. My sister's son is Tucker Lamana because it's just an awesome way to sort of uh, keep the family name a little bit. For sure, yeah. And obviously, you know, our wives give up so much by, you know, they have to give up their last name. I would, I don't think I would ever give up my last name if I was a girl, boy, whatever. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's a cool way to honor her and uh, her family. So, and then the next week, you guys had that game against the Bucks. I mean, Alex, I feel like every year for your four years in the NFL, I've been like, he's going. He's going to the Super Bowl. Like, this is the year. Like, I... I, I honestly, it's almost hard for me to believe that in your four years in New Orleans, you didn't get to one because it felt like every year I thought you guys had a great chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, this year was tough, especially, you know, it's, I, I, I don't know if it's Drew's last year, but, you know, we could assume that it is. And, um, you know, it's just it's a tough way to lose. And, you know, to a team that, you know, we know we could beat, we beat them twice. And uh, pretty soundly in both games, and um, you know it's tough. But yeah, I I, I always talk to my buddies on, on the team, and I was like, I really think 2018 was our year, and you know that was the Rams game, and you know just we we're clicking so well, and you know everything was going well that year, and you know obviously ended the way it did. Man, well, 2018, you guys were robbed. I would never get over that the rest of my life if I were you. Look, I wasn't even in the game or whatever. I'll never get over it. It's an absolute disgrace. And then the fact in my mind that they reversed the rule for this year, it it, it it's like th throws salt on the wound. Like, you're going to let that maybe happen to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's why we don't get paid to make those decisions. We just – we observe and we play. That's all we do. <laughs> so it's interesting because you said, you know, you don't know if it's Drew's last year, but we can assume. I was curious about that because even like that day of the game, there were reports that, you know, Drew's definitely retiring after the year. Was anything ever said? Did he ever say anything? Did you guys just all kind of understand it was his last year? Like, how did that work? No, no. He, I mean, he. I think whatever decision that he's going to make, he kept it pretty close to his chest. Um, you know, I don't think that he, whatever he said to the media, he had, he he did the same to you know the team. And um, I don't. Th I think the last thing that he wants to do is be a distraction in that that sort of sense. And um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what's he like? I I, I don't know if we ever talked about this. But when I was starting Go Big or like a year into Go Big recruiting, you know I talked to Drew on the phone like three or four times about it. Did I ever tell you that? No, never. I was looking for like a, a spokesman, and right. this is 2006, and he they had just gone to the NFC Championship game. It was his first year in New Orleans. And so I talked to Drew like uh, me, at least three times on the phone, and I was going to give him equity in the business maybe to be like the endorser or whatever, right? right? Yeah. And um, we we had a mutual connection, Mark Campbell, a former teammate of mine who was a teammate of Drew's. And it ended up not working out for a bunch of different reasons. And I said, well, if you ever have any advice, like, because at that point he knew the business model, you know, like he knew what I was doing. And I thought he'd be like, yeah, you should do this. He sent me an email, Alex, that was like that long with like, bullet points of advice for the like it was so impressive yeah, i was not that doesn't shock that me. at all yeah that does not shock me that's just that's just the way he is and i feel like that's what makes him so great is he's so intentional in everything he does and you know whatever he puts his you know time and mind to that he, you know he d does 100 percent. and uh, i think that's something that we could all strive for and you know just what made, made, made him great you know i remember the first time i saw him in pregame warm-ups like, I was like, what's he doing? Because he would throw the ball and then go like this and go like that. I'm like, what is he doing? Like, something's wrong. With, like, his shoulder hurts or something. <laughs> I didn't realize he was going through his progressions, yeah. um, which is amazing. Speaking of amazing, like, I mentioned, I can't believe that you just had a baby. You're a free agent, man. Like, those four years went fast. How are you feeling? 
I'm good. I'm good. You know, I think a bit, this was a big year for me to stay healthy, and I was able to do that. And, you know, sometimes it's not really up to us if that happens or not. But, you know, played all 16 games in the playoff game and, you know, made some plays and did my thing and put some good film out there. It's just, you know, anytime you you have those certain feats in your career, you know, four years in the NFL is, you know, that's a that's above average career lengthwise. And to be able to you know, continue on and, you know, hopefully take care of my family for the long run, that's really special. You know, the key to me, you already mentioned one of them. There's really two things. One, though, you played all 16 games. I mean, we know we've talked before about the adversity that you've had to overcome in college and even a couple times in the NFL to play. Actually, you didn't play all 16. You played 18 games. Right. You know, you played all 18 games, stayed healthy the whole year. I mean, you picked the right year to stay healthy the whole time so that all the teams that are interested in you and free agency can know, all right, he just played 18 games. Like, he's good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it's – it's, and even if you – you know, you know how hard it is to stay healthy in such a long season. And, uh, you know, for us, we played 18 games and, uh, you know, it's it's tough if you like to have a, a hamstring or, you know, a, a freaking toe. That's it's tough not to get. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, I'm proud of myself for that. And here's the thing, too, Alex, you're, you're still only 26. OK. And what I really like about so 26 played 18 games and you can play all three spots. Like, you can play every linebacker spot. So, no matter what team is out there, if they want a Mike or a Sam or a Will, they could look at you for that role. If they want a guy that can play all three, you know, that that makes you extremely valuable. Right, and I think that was something, you know, coming into the NFL that, you know, my Saints coaches told me is that, you know, that versatility to keep you in the league a long time, uh, you know, everything works out what are you what, what are your feelings going into it like what what are you looking for from wherever you might end up going you know I think the number one thing that any player wants to have is the right fit and for a team to believe in you I feel like you know for for Jared Goff for example you know the number one thing that he said that when he got traded was to the Lions was you know it's good to go to a place that believes in me and I feel like as a player, that's what you want, and you want the right fit and right opportunity. And, you know, it's tough It's tough to navigate that decision and, uh, you know, depend on how many teams are, are looking into you. And, um, you know, you could be from Seattle to Miami and to Buffalo. You could be anywhere. So it's kind of crazy, and it's a crazy time in our lives, but we're looking forward to it. So um, how are you feeling about, you know, the options that you'll have? I know – Nobody's allowed to talk to anybody uh, technically yet until, you know, the tampering period in, uh, I guess it's what, 10 days or less than that at this point. But um, how are you feeling about the options you'll have and uh, where you'll where you'll be able to move move Cooper in a couple of weeks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we'll I mean, we'll see. Um, you know, you hear things every now and again, like you said, it's kind of, you know, it's you know, you, you you just never know who really has interest in you until, you know, the the tampering period starts and, um, you know, until numbers start flying around. I don't think that nothing's for certain. So um, we'll see what happens. It's it's going to be it's going to be a fun ride. I know that what uh, we, we talk all the time about the adversity that you've overcome throughout your career, the mental toughness, uh, you had a different kind of adversity this year. When the Saints traded for Quan Alexander, you were starting, you were playing well. They had an opportunity. They went for it, cut in your playing time a little bit. How tough was that, and how did you handle it? Man, it, it was tough. I feel like, you know, as a competitor, you know that you, you want to be the guy, and especially when you were the guy. And, um, you know, it's just – it's tough, and it was frustrating. I think, you know, some days you just don't feel like going to work, and you just have to keep going, and – um, you know, you never know what, what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, my coach, my linebacker coach did a good job, of, you know, keep me, keep my head on straight. Cause it's easy to go stray off the path. It's really easy. And you just have to remind yourself, I'm playing in the NFL, playing a game for a living and a kid's game for a living. And, you know, you have all these blessings around you and your health and everything like that. And at the end of the year, I got an opportunity to, you know, show, show what I had. And I think I put some good film out there. 
Yeah, you really did. There's no question. Um, I have to ask this before I let you go. But you didn't you didn't cut your hair, did you? Is it like a bun? Is no, it no, in no. a bun behind you or something? Yeah, it's back here. Yeah, I just showered. So. <laughs> Dude, yeah, no. I was on a different podcast today, <laughs> and the guy the question the guy asked me was, "Who has better um, blonde hair from from your hometown, Taylor Swift or Alex <laughs> Anzalone?" And I was yeah. like, "I'm going with Alex." I'm like, Taylor's <laughs> hair is nice, but. It's kind of normal hair for a girl. Like Alex has unbelievable hair for a guy. So I give you the edge over Taylor Swift today in the hair oh, department. It. I love it. Thank you. Hey, I, I will let you get back to Daddy Duty. Really appreciate the time. Congratulations again. So pumped for you on that front. Uh, love the story of getting the the induction. Is that even what it's called? <laughs> getting induced that yeah, night. And, that. <laughs> and uh and I'm 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 really rooting for you in free agency. I can't wait to see where you land. Gonna be awesome. Keep me posted. Good luck, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Ross. Good talking to you. There he is, my buddy Alex Anzalone. You know, one thing Alex will never ever probably have to handle or worry about losing his hair, like I have. You see it? If you're if you're watching YouTube, you can see my bald spot. Here's the thing: it would be way worse without keeps way worse you know two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35 i told you i was 26 getting married and i look at the video now and you can kind of tell a little bit more than 50 million men in the u.s suffer from male pattern baldness look i'm not going to call them out okay but i've got close friends family members that i have gotten and told you need to use keeps recently and they did the order, keeps.com slash Ross. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Ross to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash Ross to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S.com slash Ross. Keeps.com slash Ross. Look, there's two. There's only two FDA-approved medications. I get them both from Keeps. You should as well. Keeps.com slash Ross. Tux Takes. Hey, Ross. Well, the biggest news since we spoke on Thursday is that Big Ben will officially be back in Pittsburgh after agreeing to a $5 million pay cut for this season with the Steelers. And I think the Steelers listen to Andrew. Bri, if you remember a couple weeks ago, Andrew said, get him to take a pay cut. They did. I mean, he reduced this is rare. You know, not many guys are going to cut their pay from 19 million to 14 million. You might say, oh, still 14 million. Yeah, it's still five million dollars. And by the way, there are guys getting 40 to 45 million dollars a year. So Ben Roethlisberger is now getting a third of the top end guys. And maybe more importantly, Bri, half of like the Jared Goff, Jimmy Garoppolo types. Half. I mean, that that is a guy that is really trying to help his team win this year. And what drives me bananas is that there are Steelers fans that still don't want him back. And still don't appreciate this. I, I think it's crazy. I think they are spoiled. And part of me is looking forward to seeing how Steelers fans handle the other side when they no longer have Ben as their quarterback and they're searching for the next guy. We'll see how that goes for them. I, for one, think the Steelers did the right thing. They lowered his salary cap number by more than $15 million. I mean, that's gigantic. For them to be able to field a solid team around them. Tux takes. We also have our first player to officially receive the franchise tag. It's Bronco safety, Justin Simmons. Again. Right. Second year in a row. Now the Broncos are saying it's just a placeholder because they want to get a long-term deal done with Justin. Here's the thing. And I think I mentioned this last week. Maybe I didn't. But I had tweeted at Ross Tucker NFL that the salary cap, the franchise tag numbers are lower. You know, the franchise tag numbers are based um, in large part on the salary cap, right? They're lower this year. 
you know, like the, the running back number is $2 million lower than it was last year. So in a lot of places, it these numbers are lower. That's not the case, though, when it's the second year in a row, like Justin Simmons or Dak Prescott or Joe Thune or uh, Brandon Sheriff. You're going to pay him 120% of the year before. So that's a, that's a big price tag there for the Broncos on the one-year deal for Simmons. Tux takes. Some of the players being cut include Giants wide receiver Golden Tate and uh, David Mayo. Lions cut Desmond Trufant and the Saints cut their punter Thomas Morstead. So this is what happened. I didn't realize David Mayo was like a guy that making enough money to be a cap casualty, to be honest with you. But Golden Tate uh, was an investment that did not pay off for the Giants. Same with the Lions and Desmond Trufant. That, look, everybody's saying it. And we're about to find out it's going to happen to a lot of guys this week because with the salary cap going down, you're going to be able to get guys from other teams for half of what these guys are making. You know, if like a guard, like a Gabe Jackson or a true font, I don't know what he's making 12 million or something. You cut him. They're going to be able to get a guy like, like true font for 6 million just because of the market this year. So a lot of teams are going to do this and take their chances with who's available on the market. I mean, the Saints are even doing it with Thomas Morstead because punter is a place where you can get a rookie. It's probably not going to be as good as Morstead, but it's a place where you can save money. Tux takes. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles have been busy restructuring the contract of uh, Darius Slay while giving Jason Kelsey a raise to at least $9 million and declining to tender punter Cam Johnston. Right. So Slay freed up more than $9 million in cap space, which most teams just have that as the ability to do that in any contract at any time. So they just converted his salary for this year to a bonus and spread it out over the rest of his contract. Jason Kelsey, I was not sure what he was going to do. I, I was not sure what Kelsey was going to do, whether or not he would play. I think he was scheduled to make like $5 million. So to give him $4 million more guaranteed, that's tough to turn down, man. And, and the ability to make up the $12 million, that that is – and I know he's already made a lot of money, but you get to the point where you're whatever he is, 31, 32, and you think – I'm never going to be able to make this kind of money again the rest of my life. And this is money that I can put to work investing. I think Jason's into real estate stuff and really be able to set my family up. He just had his second child, I believe, set my family up for generations. You know, if I just go out and play football for one more year or two more years or whatever it is, totally understand it. And then the Cam Johnston thing. And by the way, I think the Eagles. They have a chance to be really good up front, both sides of the ball, O-line, D-line. They're going to be young and probably inexperienced at skill positions, but they got a chance to be pretty darn good up front, both sides of the ball, which I think in the NFC East gives them a chance. As for Cam Johnston, you know, again, the, the restricted free agent tender for Cam Johnston is too much. So they'll try to see if they can get him back on the minimum. If he goes somewhere else, they'll get somebody else for the minimum. Tux takes. And lastly, the NFL has hired Maya Chaka as the first black female official. And the Bills gave safety Micah Hyde a two-year, $23 million extension. What a great – I think that they signed him. I don't think they traded for him, but what a great get. Either way, Micah Hyde was from Green Bay for Buffalo. And that the, the irony, of course, is that Green Bay tried to fill his shoes with Adrian Amos, who's a good player. I don't think he's as good as Micah Hyde, though. Maybe you should have just kept Micah Hyde. Anyway, whatever. The Packers annoy me with some of their free agent decisions. But congrats to Micah Hyde and congrats to Maya Chaka. I mean, that is anytime you're the first anything, that is cool. Because now young girls in general, young black girls in particular, will have a visual example of something they could potentially accomplish if they so choose, if that's their dream or that's goal, their goal. And I think that's awesome. I also think Raycon wireless earbuds are awesome. 
Look, I, I love to listen to music while I'm working out. Highly recommend you guys listen to Raycon wireless earbuds. Look, you can do it for these podcasts, for, for my podcast. You can listen to it through the Raycon wireless earbuds. How about that? You're supporting the show and listening to it with high quality. All I know is if my Go Big Recruiting employees, I've told you guys before, Brian uses them. My wife uses them when she's in bed. She connects them to the her phone and she's watching like some Netflix show. And I'm like, honey, I'm tired. I go to bed. She has them in. I love it. Bri uses them. My Go Big employees literally talk to our customers with the Raycon wireless earbuds in. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Plus, they're giving you 15% off all their products. All of them. Here's what you got to do to go get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tucker. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's very smart. Get the spare. Trust me. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Tucker. Buyraycon.com slash Tucker. Let's get to an email, right? How about an email? All right. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, Well, here's your chance. chance. It's time to ask Ross. The email address, ross at rostucker.com. If you ever want to get at your boy for any reason. So you want me for a speaking engagement or to advertise on the show, hit me up, ross at rostucker.com. Love it. But also, if you ever take advantage of any sponsor, like Raycon, like Keeps, whatever, just make sure you forward me that email after you do, ross at rostucker.com. Then ask me any question you want. I guarantee to read and respond to it on the show. And you might be the winner of one of these awesome press passes each and every week that I give out. Sign a press pass for somebody. What do you got, Bright? Uh, today's question from Frederick Krieger, who says, Hey, Ross is a lifelong Eagles fan. How do the Eagles fix this mess over there? Smaller question as a Quaker is whether Justin Watson is going to be able to move up with the Bucks. He seemed like a perfect receiver to me for a Belichick type offense. Great hands, good routes, intelligent. Third question Why do you and the other Philly guys get all the announcer gigs for all the national radio games? Is Westwood one a Philly guy? Interesting. All right. So Frederick, three questions. Wow. How do the Eagles fix this mess? They're on their way. They're going to have a really good line up front, both ways, uh, both sides of the ball. They're going to continue to get draft picks. They got to figure out the quarterback position, Frederick. I mean, it's it's no secret whether they take one at six or it's Jalen Hurts job for this year. What they need to figure out now is the quarterback. I think the other stuff will come if they figure out who the quarterback is. As for Justin Watson, I guess Frederick went to Penn. He's a Quaker. You know, I'm not – I just think that there's too many guys there now. You know, I mean, they brought in Antonio Brown. That kind of cut into Justin Watson's playing time. He might have to go somewhere else. Now, if Chris Godwin goes somewhere else in free agency, maybe Justin Watson can step up and get more playing time as for why do you and the other Philly guys get all the announcer gigs I'm not sure who he, I mean it would be me and Tom McCarthy maybe I don't even know who else he's considering a Philly guy uh, Tom McCarthy is the only one that I can think of I'm sure yeah, I don't know Frederick who else you're referring to there I guess Jaws got a couple games last year but it's a lot of Tony Baselli, a lot of Kurt Warner James Lofton I mean I I'm not sure where you're coming from that. And then play by play, Ian Eagle's not a Philly guy. He's North Jersey. I'm trying to think who else. Oh, Scott Graham got a couple. He's kind of a Central Jersey guy, but all right. Um, good question. Good questions, I should say. By the way, uh, I'm going to email you guys that qualified for it, but our next fan uh, football feedback, our YouTube exclusive show, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, that'll be Tuesday morning. Or Tuesday afternoon, I should say. So here's what we got. Tuesday morning, we'll have the college draft, talking tight ends, fullbacks, H-backs, with my boy Emery Hunt and Dane Brugler from The Athletic. Tuesday afternoon, we're going to talk a lot of college hoops, 
some NBA, some NFL lessons learned, as well as some hockey with Paul Roberts on the Even Money Podcast, really getting you ready for the conference tournaments and March Madness on Even Money Podcast and talking NFL, we always do. And then Fantasy Feast, Evan Silva is back on Wednesday. Get excited about that. And of course, Andrew Brandt, Greg Cosell, the whole deal, Wednesday, Thursday, Raw Sucker Football Podcast. I'll have some interesting stuff on Wednesday as well because tomorrow I am getting my baseline assessment test for the NFL's concussion settlement. So I'll be able to tell that story and give you guys some insight into what that was like for me. Shout outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.